First up, the Volvo C70. But would it prove to be a hero Autobot or an evil Decepticon? Starting with the most obvious feature that distinguishes this car from all other Volvos, the folding roof. It's incredibly well made and to be completely honest, it's an exquisite piece of engineering. When the aluminium panels that make up the roof go about the business of folding away into the boot, it's a beautiful sight. Move over Optimus Prime. This is a real piece of space age technology. <laughs> It has beautiful lines, stunning styling, and the attention to detail is just exceptional. But then, Volvo do share a factory with Pininfarina, the style guru behind Alfa Romeo. While it's incredibly well built, phenomenally stylish, and the seats are incredibly comfortable. Not only that, but it's also got a tremendous amount of kit on board. So Volvo finally created an exciting, sporty car then? Well, no. Um, I'm afraid, as usual, Volvo have got a bit carried away with all the sensible stuff. Um, most cars are generally referred to as females, you know? She's got lovely lines, she goes like a rocket, that sort of thing. Um, but the Volvo is distinctly male. And to prove it, um, Volvo have gone and put the male symbol in the middle of the steering wheel and on the front grille and the only place that you'll find that these days is either in an Austin Powers movie or on a Volvo. It's a middle-aged man with a beard. It has to be said that Volvos are specifically designed to be sensible and they've even made a diesel version of this, their most exciting model. They just can't seem to help themselves. It's true, the C70 is effectively a car that wants to go out and party with all the other soft tops. It wants to go to a rave, but it's not allowed to have any fun at all because its mother wouldn't approve. It is the most politically correct car in the world. If it were human, it would probably be outside Parliament campaigning against something. Of course, we all know that Volvos have to drive around with their headlights permanently on, even on the brightest of summer days. But this one locks you in the second that you start to move. It's front-wheel drive with traction control, which means that the handling is far from exciting and the gearbox is just not designed for fast changes at all. At a more leisurely pace, the box is smooth and refined, but starts throwing it around these windy roads with a bit of enthusiasm, and you soon realise that the gears are often hard to find. With a bit of brute force, you can usually get them to drop in, but I've managed to find fifth instead of third on a few occasions, which can make for some pretty hairy overtaking if you're not careful.